Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and you're listening to a new episode of Living Better, a podcast about health, motivation, and productivity. And what I want to talk about today is probiotics, uh, or just like the whole like nature of like why probiotics, prebiotics matter, how does things like fermented foods and fiber kind of play into all of this. Um, so, because it can play a huge role in several different things. One, just like feeling better, being able to digest a variety of foods better, so that way you don't have as much inflammation from digesting those foods, uh, weight loss, um, all these things kind of get touched on in this one topic. And essentially what we mean when we talk about like prebiotics and probiotics is we're talking about your gut. Okay, so generally what happens is that in your intestines, there is bacteria that lives and eats the things that you ate. Okay, so basically, you know, you will... You will eat food, it'll go down your esophagus to your stomach. Stomach acids break it down, you know, then it gets like detoxified by the liver. The liver processes and detoxifies, and then the remain the what's left will just kind of get passed into the colon, and different types of food will then just be handled there. Either you will absorb it for like nutrients, energy, some stuff your body will just not absorb, which will either just go on its way out. Or it might be in by the bacteria that's that's kind of like living in your gut. But the benefit of that is that depending which bacteria are living in your gut, and it's like it's, there's no like, oh, okay, you need this exact bacteria. It's more about having like a diverse ecosystem. Um, and generally, if you have a diverse ecosystem, you should generally end up with better bacteria. And also, if you practice good habits, you can you can kind of help influence so that way the right bacteria survive and the bad bacteria die. We'll talk about all that, but essentially what will happen is that the, those bacteria, if they're there, they will like chomp on it and they can release all sorts of compounds. Like Generally the main thing you think about is like a thing called butyrate uh, or, or short, uh, what's it, what am I thinking about, uh, I think it's like what short chain fatty acids is the term I'm looking for, but the idea is that um, they'll make butyrate and then butyrate's going to help you like uh, burn fat, get energy, do all sorts of really cool stuff. But there's other things that can happen with different types of bacteria. So, for example, like there's, if you eat pomegranates, like if you eat like a pomegranate, like once or twice a week, if you have the right bacteria in your gut, it can generate something called like urolithin A, which can help you like rejuvenate. You know, like, um, you know, one help you prevent like things like hair turning white and other sign prevent aging, but it can also, you know, at, at a very extreme amount, again, not likely, but on the extremes, could possibly even like reverse some of the signs of aging. Okay, like you'll see improvement in your skin, improvement in your hair. And things like that. So basically, there's a lot that you can get out of thinking about your pro probiotics and prebiotics. And what do these two terms mean? What's the difference between a probiotic and a prebiotic? So the idea is that you need to do two things. You need to get the bacteria in your gut. That's the probiotic piece. So probiotic things are things that you eat that will that generally come with the bacteria. Okay, these are generally going to be like fermented foods. Because generally, what is fermented foods? I mean, fermented foods are just foods that have suddenly been broken down by bacteria. So then when you eat them, that bacteria that broke down the food is going to be with it. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, so then that's going to transport a bunch of bacteria into your gut. Then there's the prebiotic effect. This is going to be generally happen from eating uh, different types of fiber. Some fiber better than, than others. Like particularly like, uh, like inulin, which would be like from artichoke. Um, Basically, eating a lot of like chia and flax seeds uh, will do a lot to sort of feed those gut bacteria. Okay, um, but generally, anything that's like any fiber, your body is generally not going to process. Your body is not going to absorb it, which is why you generally subtract that from like net carbs, because technically that's not going to get absorbed by your body, so it won't get turned into fat, so it won't affect the equation of it won't you and it won't be used for energy, so it won't trigger insulin in general. Um, and in some cases, it might even dampen like that actual, your insulin response. Um, so fiber is generally like, good on a lot of different levels. Um, but the idea is that the fiber, what happens, since it's not getting absorbed by your body, it, and it tends to kind of sit there in your colon, so that way all the bacteria can feast on it. So you, you're getting all these, and then what happens is that um, that bacteria feast on it, you're generating all this butyrate, this is going to result in your body feeling satiated, so you're not going to feel as hungry as often, so you probably will end up overeating less. It makes it really easier to control your diet because you're not feeling hungry. 
Um, and on top of it, like just helping you actually burn fat because that butyrate will also help like release uh, fatty acids, burn fat. Um, so that's the idea there. So basically, the idea is you could take supplements, but you don't need to because generally you can get you can get and feed your gut biome with just natural foods. Okay, we want to make sure that you're constant. I got you. You really want to try to put in prebiotic or probiotic foods in your daily diet. So, like for example, with me, that's going to be generally be mainly sauerkraut and kimchi. So, like literally every day, whatever I eat, I'm putting a little bit of sauerkraut or kimchi on top of it. You could also get like fermented pickles. Okay, but key the key thing is that they have to be fermented, not pickled. So the difference is like a pickled uh, pickle is going to have vinegar. And the thing is that the vinegar is going to kill that bacteria. So if you get a pickled uh, pickle, um, still good for you because of the acetic acid that's in the vinegar, which is the reason why like people will drink apple cider vinegar, uh, which has a lot of benefits in helping digest foods, uh, making you feel satiated, dampening your your insulin response, uh, which are all phenomenal. And also I think it has like helps out your liver in some ways uh, and detoxing your liver. So like that's still good. Eat your pickles. Um, but if you can get the fermented pickles, it's even better because the fermented pickles, what happens is that they don't have vinegar, so the bacteria is alive. So basically, like, and then you can ferment your own pickles. It's probably the easiest thing to do. Just get a, just buy a jar, fill it up with a water, and, a, and like, I would say like, I think was it like a quarter or a third salt, okay, of, of the weight of the water. Um, there's different ways you can kind of like back into it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the idea is water and salt. You take wa you fill up a jar with water and salt, and let's say some, cu and then you chop up some cucumbers and put them in there, and then you just let it sit out for like seven days, uh, and not in the refrigerator. You let it sit out in a nice, like dark, damp corner. Not damp, but just a dark corner. Um, the only key thing is that you want to make sure that the actual cucumbers are submerged in the water. Like, as long as they're they stay under the water. There are really good like fermenting weights you can buy on Amazon that are really cheap and they make it really easy because it basically is like this like little hockey puck type thing. Uh, it should fit in your standard mason jar and you basically you you know you put in all the water and all that stuff and then you put in the you put in the uh, the cucumbers and then you put the weight on top of it and that pushes all the cucumbers down below the water so then you don't have to really like you don't even have to think about it you're not gonna have any mold issues because none of those cucumbers are being exposed to outside of the water. But generally what happens over those seven days. Technically, like the minimum is four, and you can leave them for out as long as you want. The longer you leave them out, the more bitter they'll get, and the more bitter they'll get, that just generally means the more like broken down it is. And generally, like any bitter foods are generally going to be good for you. Like I would just say, like almost any time I think of anything that's bitter, it's probably good for you for some reason. Like pure chocolate is good for you. Um, not milk chocolate that has sugar pure cacao powder, pure cacao nibs, uh, pure cacao wafers. Um, but yes, so essentially you want to eat fermented food. That's the general, like, the story there. Um, cool. Generally, anything fermented is oftentimes better than the non-fermented version of it. Um, although cabbage, even when it's not fermented as kimchi or sauerkraut, cabbage is always a good thing to eat. And, you know... To the extent that you can, generally, anytime you, you were thinking, oh, I'm going to use lettuce, use cabbage. Okay? Uh, eat a lot of cabbage. It's definitely one of those things you can really just kind of go to town on. Um, and artichokes are also pretty good as well. But um, bottom line is then now that's going to get the bacteria into your body. Um, and then you're also going to want to have a steady amount of fiber. I mean, you also just want fiber for motility, you know, so that way your gut moves stuff along, so stuff comes out. Yeah, and you don't necessarily need much fiber for that sole purpose. Okay, and then you could actually end up having the opposite if you have too much fiber, where it just you create blockages. Uh, you know, so you want to be have a steady intake of fiber, but again, don't overdo it. You know. Um, but like good fibers to like just add to your diet again inulin uh glucoman fiber that's stuff to make konjac noodles out of um psyllium um 
and then whatever the types of fiber that you're technically getting out of like chia and flaxseed. Uh, chia seed is, um, well, generally, especially if you're on a keto diet, so you're trying to limit your carbs, you're going to be better off with a soluble, soluble fiber. That's like a, like a psyllium or a chia seed. Because what happens with soluble fibers, they can absorb water. So you generally get a little bit more bang for your buck. You can eat a lot less soluble fiber. And it's going to provide you with a lot more motility because it's absorbing all this water. If you ever put like chia seed in like a glass of milk to make chia pudding, you'll see like the chia expands. So when you are consuming chia seeds in your body, like they'll absorb water and then they, they take up that extra mass and they can help move things along. But again, they'll also get like eaten by bacteria along the way. So you're getting both, you're getting like both ends of the benefit. Um, but you're also doing it without consuming less calories. So if you were to take a look at like non-soluble fiber, like a, like a flaxseed, you probably have to eat more flaxseed to get the same motility. And that would mean more calories. Um, although again, you know, fiber, your body is generally not digesting it. So like oftentimes like the weight you'll gain from eating fiber is temporary because it's just kind of like while the fiber is sitting there and then a few days later the, the you know it works its way through your system it's like oh but you know generally those kind of add like like if i eat a lot of fiber at a sitting i'll feel like i like i won't feel like my body my body composition has changed so much but i can definitely feel like where i can definitely see at a scale that i you know i have like this extra two three pounds um which is partly uh, you know, like the fiber wing. Again, at the end of the day, like, you, you know, you're putting on weight from water, you're putting on uh, weight on from the food that you ate, but it's not necessarily just turning into fat. It could be turning into muscle. It could just be working its way through your system, uh, being stored as glucose in your muscles. There's all sorts of different places like your that, that potential weight could be coming from. And so you don't know, though. So basically, you know, as far as like, okay, hey, am I storing this stuff as fat? You go, you know, you, you dip your neck down and you look at your stomach. And that'll help you give an idea of where you are in, in that regards. But hopefully this gives you a better idea of like prebiotics and probiotics and how to think about it and why do you care. Okay. Um, generally, if you do decide you want to take a like a probiotic, prebiotic uh, supplement, generally the idea is you don't want to take it. You'll, and they'll generally say this on the like label, like don't take it while you're eating. The reason is like if you eat, the probiotic supplement while you're eating a lot of your stomach acid is going to kill a lot of the bacteria you know so hopefully some of them make it but you know you're better off like eating it like you know half hour before or, or i think it's like maybe an hour before or half hour after I, i'm not sure of the exact timing but the idea is that you want um the food to so i'll leave it at that again my name is alex Brissett. i'll see you all later have a great day and i also started a new discord for like health chats if you want to join that i'll put that link in the episode description